if you color correct enough shots, eventually you're going to need to start keyframing some of your corrections or have them animate or change over time. Oftentimes to fix a mistake, but also to create kind of dynamic effects and looks. Luckily, DaVinci Resolve has a very robust keyframing system, and that's what we're going to cover here in this movie. Keyframing is down here in the lower right hand corner of our interface. I've got a little disclosure triangle down here in the bottom left of that interface to expand out the keyframing menu and give it over to a much larger portion of the interface. Notice I've got five nodes up here and I have five correctors. Corrector number one matches node number one. Node number two matches corrector number two, so on and so forth. I also have a timeline ruler up here that allows me to scrub through the clip by clicking and dragging in this dark gray area up here. And this is precisely the same as clicking and dragging up here on the timeline. Notice as I drag to the end of the shot here, I've lost the current time indicator in the keyframe editor. Why is that? My magnification was set to full. So I take the zoom slider and click and drag it to the left. And now I'm zoomed all the way out to the entire length of the clip. And now I can click and drag throughout this clip. I'll press the home button to get me back to the first frame. Node number five up here is doing a brighten. If I turn it off, you can see the effect that's going on here. Well, I can do the same thing down here on the corrector. The corrector I've got for corrector number five, I can click on this orange button and it turns that node off. And you can see visually it's turned off on that track. I'll re-enable it. I can also lock it. So if I lock off that track, now I can't make any changes to the corrector. So as I try to make changes, they're not going to stick. <laughs> you see that? I'll unlock that. I can also enable auto keyframing by clicking on the diamond here. Let's pick a random point in this clip and let's do a move. And it just keyframed that move. Let's go to another random location here and let's push this to magenta. And now we've got a dynamic change happening over time. Moving from this look over time through that purple look. I'm going to undo these last few changes. Turn off auto keyframing. You might be wondering what parameters can be keyframed. Well, if you forget, it's very easy to remember. Just click on this little disclosure triangle. And these are all the parameters we can keyframe. All the different windows, the color corrector, qualifiers, defocus, noise reduction, all of this stuff here can be keyframed over time. But perhaps one of the most important choices you'll need to make when you start keyframing is, do you want to keyframe all of these nodes all at once every time you add a keyframe? Or do you want to select color and then only add keyframes to the active node? Right now, node number five is active. And you can see it has the green bar. If I make node number two active, it has the green bar. How do I add a keyframe? Well, if I command left bracket, I've just added a dynamic keyframe. If I come back here and command right bracket, I've just added a static keyframe. Static keyframes are circle shapes. Dynamic keyframes are diamond shapes. And a static keyframe is pretty simple. I'm going to come to the right of a static keyframe. Let's push this red. I'll press home, hit play, and notice what happens. It pops at the point of the static keyframe. This is a perfect time to talk about the differences between a static keyframe and a dynamic keyframe. Remember, I did this red push after the static keyframe, before the dynamic keyframe. What do you think is going to happen on the other side of the dynamic keyframe? After all, on the static keyframe before it, it held this non-altered look. Then we pushed it to this red look. Intuitively, I think after this keyframe, we'd be back to the unaltered look. Let's go after it, and it didn't. In other words, the dynamic keyframe is a placeholder. It's a start point. If I were to go and turn this magenta, I might think that I'd still have the red look on the other side of the keyframe, and I don't. But I still have the clean look on the other side of this static keyframe. If I want this dynamic keyframe to act like a keyframe and animate change over time, 
I need to have a keyframe after it for it to animate to. This time I'll put in a dynamic keyframe. Now we've got this little dissolve marker here showing me that, okay, now we're going to move from one setting to another across this period of time. Now if I go ahead and let's push this back towards neutral. Let's neutralize it. All right. What will happen now? Let's go back. There we go. Now we've got our magenta look, and let's just slowly go across this transition as it transitions back to this clean look. All right, so a dynamic keyframe needs another keyframe for it to actually keyframe off changes over time. And it can go to another dynamic keyframe, or if I want to, I can also turn this to a static keyframe by clicking on and turning the diamond orange, right-clicking over the diamond, and change to static keyframe. I'll add another static keyframe, and now let's go green. I'll come back to the middle of the transition, and now I'll step through this. We're clean, and then it pops green, just like a static keyframe should. Now, if I go ahead and change this keyframe here back to dynamic by clicking to highlight it and make it orange, right-click and change to dynamic keyframe, there we go. Now it should animate it over time, which it's doing. And if I think this animation is a little too fast, I can click on the keyframe itself and extend it and make it longer. It takes a little bit longer before it gets to that full green look. I can also delete keyframes, again, highlight it, right click, and delete selected keyframe. I can also change these keyframes up here on the master track. So if I have node 2 that has a keyframe going on, and then on this D yellow, let's say this D yellow, I want that to animate over time. And I think I'll animate the opacity of this node, so I'll come into the key menu, and then I'll add a dynamic keyframe at this point. And we want this to fade out over time, but before this static keyframe over here kicks in, I'll go right to this frame, add a static keyframe, and set my key gain down to zero. And now I've got two sets of nodes, each with their own independent keyframing going on. And on this master track here, I can adjust either set of keyframes. Play through, and that's the result. Lastly but not least, for you power users out there, if I want to just animate a specific parameter, let's say noise reduction, I can scroll down the disclosure triangle and just right click in the noise reduction track, add static keyframe, and now I've only added a static keyframe at my current time indicator just on that track, and so I can animate different elements within the same node, I can animate them differently. And that is the fundamentals of keyframing here in DaVinci Resolve. It's actually pretty powerful. I find I usually don't need to get to this level of granularity you're seeing here, but being able to work and manipulate keyframes both within each node and then also up here at the master level where if I have overlapping keyframes, I can then grab them and move them together. That I find to be very powerful and I rarely need to go really nitty gritty.